This one goes to the three states that will vote for marijuana legalization this November. Here, I will try to show how prohibition is a radical strategy with dire consequences, and that there are more reasonable and intelligent ways to deal with drugs, especially cannabis. In 2009, the United Nations Office for Drugs and Crime in its annual drug report recognized for the first time the existence of unintended consequences of drug prohibition. Almost 50 years after the promulgation of the single convention on narcotic drugs, it was clear for everyone that prohibition had failed, and more people were using, drug potency was rising, and corruption was rampant. Nevertheless, in the same text, Antonio Maria Costa, the director at the time, still classified the war on drugs as significant as the war on hunger, or even world peace. I cannot fathom what kind of deranged idiot can think that this comparison makes any sense. To illustrate this point, I will use the same strategy employed by Jack Herr in the 80s, when he masterfully used the allegory within the child's fable, The Emperor Has No Clothes, to illuminate the irrationality of cannabis prohibition. Here, I will use a famous fable to present cannabis prohibition as a radical solution with dire consequences and with its origin in racism and fear. The Sleeping Beauty fable is a medieval European story with multiple versions and popularized in the cinematographic version of Disney. In summary, this fable tells of a princess cursed by an evil fairy in her early infancy to a long-lasting sleep when reaching adolescence. The princess is awakened by a kiss from a heroic prince 100 years later. What is important here is to bear that the real villain of the fable is not the bitter and vindictive fairy, but the king, a fearful and superstitious racist. During the celebration of the daughter's birth, an uninvited fairy appears. Why was she not invited? This omission may be regarded as the first of the king's errors, an error of arrogance. Relative to the war on drugs, this represents the origin of prohibition to certain drugs, that is, an attempt to exclude the different, the foreign. The evil fairy thus retaliates with a curse, foresees the death of the daughter when she reaches 16 years of age. But what if we inverted the point of view of this debacle? The actions of the fairy could be interpreted as a reaction to the king's aggression, a lucid response of an excluded class. Not a real curse, but an honest warning from an otherwise evil fairy to the consequences of the king's racism. It could simply mean that if the king continued with his racist policies, his daughter would pay a high price. The curse consisted in foreseeing that the young daughter would hurt herself when touching the spindle of a spinning wheel when she completed 16 years of age. What was then the king's reaction? He ordered the destruction of all spinning wheels and banned the thread producing device from the kingdom. The parallel with the present day drug policy almost goes without saying. The destruction and prohibition of spinning wheels is equivalent to the total prohibition of cannabis. The ensuing result in the fable is similar to what happens to a segment of our youth due to the total prohibition of certain drugs. When the daughter reaches her 16 years, she finds a lost spinning wheel forgotten in some hidden corner of the kingdom. Without any knowledge of spinning wheels, she touches the spindle fulfilling the fairy's prediction. This is the most important parallel to cannabis prohibition. It is obvious that the princess did not stand a chance when confronted with the spinning wheel. Likewise, under prohibition, a segment of our youth is full yet mercy to the dangers of drug use, to another and complete lack of information. Complete for sure, since for the intentions of the king to succeed, it's not just necessary to prohibit spinning wheels, but to completely banish it, which implies not only the destruction of existing equipment, but also the prohibition of its construction, concept, and even maintenance of its knowledge, of its uses and benefits. This complete exclusion is the consequence of the marriage of arrogance with fear, a total exclusion at all levels, especially at a moral one. In fact, the legislation imposed on a certain drug in general, and cannabis in particular, is often complete and absolute, restricting all aspects that can be restricted. This is observed at all levels of legislation, be it local or international. This is patent 
In the Alinea F, Article 2, Chapter 49 of the UN Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs of 1961, therein it is stated that scientific research with cannabis should be extinct as soon as possible, within a period not over 25 years from its installment. Was there a more reasonable alternative to the King's reaction to the spindle curse? Myself, I would prefer that my daughter be familiarized with all there is to know about spinning wheels. How they work, where they are found, the sound they make, even the smell they exude, I will make sure she would know how to use and where to touch the equipment. Above all, teach her not to touch, or better yet, not want to touch the spindle. Both these alternatives, presented to the king, prohibition or knowledge, would carry risks. But only one of these options requires the king to trust his daughter's better judgment. Thus, if the king had allowed the spinning wheels and taught everything there is to know about them and spindles, she would have never touched the spindle. She would have produced threads. She would have knitted her clothes and used spinning wheels to her heart's desire without ever fulfilling the curse. But being oblivious to everything concerning the spinning wheels, the most obvious prediction of the fairy was fulfilled. If the king did not amend his ways, the youth would pay its price. The fact that the fable employs a threatening device as a symbolic center reverberates even further the parallel with the war on drugs, especially in regards to cannabis. Take the fact that cannabis is an important source of vegetable fiber. For years, it was a prime source for the threads used for clothing, cords, and the like. Due to its strength and durability, it was used in the manufacture of sails and cores of the ships used in transoceanic voyages during the period of the Great Discoveries. This convergence can be used to illustrate the similarities between the unintended consequences from the spindle prohibition and that of cannabis. Somewhat obvious, but rarely or never mentioned, are the consequences of the king's actions over the kingdom's economy. Take a moment of thought. What would have been the major, immediate consequence of the king's incision? Certainly, its weaving industry would be in total havoc after the prohibition of spinning wheels. The price of alternative sources of threads and clothes, like rawhide, would soar. A black market for spinning wheels, imported threads would have proliferated and depleted the kingdom's economy. It does not surprise that after 16 years, the whole kingdom would sink into a 100 year slumber with its princess. But there is redemption in the story. A courageous prince dares enter the kingdom to awake and free the princess. Here, I will make a point in stretching a rather forceful but optimistic parallel in the hopes for a happy ending also to the war on drugs. Instead of focusing on the virility of the heroic character, I prefer to idealize a different virtue certainly present within the prince when taking into account the difficult tasks ahead of him. Because of its positive fantasy, I prefer to use the ending depicted in the Disney version of the fable to complete this allegory. Enough of me. In this version, a dense forest of thorns and a great fire-breathing dragon defends the consequences of the king's ignorance. Since the elixir for ignorance is reason, I picture the prince as an allegory of reason. This makes up for an uneven battle, where reason is only tenacious and unyielding, and ignorance is a disproportionate sized dragon, but here resides hope, owing to reason's resilience. In the end, ignorance is defeated by its own weight. Hope and redemption at the fable's end. The long slumber of the princess is awakened by the kiss of reason. It is important to note that reason awakens not only the princess but also the whole kingdom. The cure for prohibition maladies is not only and will not be restricted to the users, but it will fall onto the whole society. For society too suffers from this malaise that inflicts this deep sleep caused by irrationality of radical prohibition of certain drugs. The cure is a more rational drug policy. Above all, one that deposits trust on the human judgment, free will, and its right for liberty. Vote yes for cannabis.